Tech Effect. Welcome to Tech Effect, a monthly podcast series brought to you by Tesla Lab. I'm Adrian, the host of the podcast, and together with industry experts, we provide discussions and advanced insights about trending topics in software engineering. Don't miss out on new episodes, and let's keep advancing our skills and knowledge set. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast Tech Effect. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the topic of test leading, what it is, what goes into it, how to plan, implement and improve the tasks. What are the metrics and the risks that can happen? Uh, about myself, I'm an expert in audio and video testing. I'm leading efforts to ensure the accuracy and consistency of test result data, managing one of the test labs biggest audio and video benchmarking projects. Uh, joining us today is highly experienced test manager and test lead at Tesla Lab, who's worked in the software quality assurance industry for more than 10 years. And it is... Oh, Christoph Freemanis. Yeah. So it's a pleasure to have you here today at Tech Effect, Christoph. Yeah, thanks for having me. So how are you feeling? Oh, uh, so far so good. So... Great. Happy so to answer your questions. <laughs> nice. So the first question is going to be always the serious one. It's going to be, if you had the chance to invent the country, how would you name it? Um, yeah, I have. A, well, I haven't had a lot of thoughts about that, but uh, I will be very patriotic in, in this case, and uh, probably I will stick to Latvia. Wow, that's that's really nice. <laughs> As it's uh, on, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's leave it as it, it shall be Latvia. So yeah, uh, next question what we have is why did you choose uh, quality assurance for your career? So um, actually, it all started when I was already in primary school. So I already knew back then that I wanted to do something related to IT. Okay. Uh, obviously, it was. Uh, kind of an easy choice afterwards from uh, after high school uh, to decide where to go next to study. So I went to uh, Ventspils University. Um, there uh, got myself uh, more into like development. I understood that, well, development is not for me, that I probably won't be able to write any single line of code after I graduated. And uh, at some point, uh, yeah, uh, there was opportunity, uh, as Andres Ervins had just established uh, Tesdale Lab. Uh, they were looking for um, employees. So got the offer to, to join in. Uh, obviously, as it was one of my kind of a goals to work in the uh, IT sphere and it was in development, so it was kind of a very perfect uh, for me. Um, so joined and since then I'm here. And what was your first task at Tesla Lab when you joined? If you remember first it. Task, uh, of course, I remember it was actually happening in the dorms of the university. Uh, we were working to, together with the, another colleague who started together with me. Our first task was we were exploring how to launch uh, simulators of Android and iOS and preparing a documentation like a guide how to do it uh, properly uh, before we actually did any testing tasks so so yeah at that particular time probably it felt like uh quite hard task yeah uh, it was yeah <laughs> because like back in the days like there weren't too many documentation available so it was just explore fail explore more fail okay, more and uh, for how long you've been a quality assurance engineer because we know that you eventually you are test leading right you're test lead yep so what was your path to test leading so uh when i joined tdl i started as a manual qa uh worked as a manual QA for I think like um, four years or something and uh, yeah um, initially I was uh, working with one client uh, which was developing uh, application similar to Skype um, so was was gaining my experience and knowledge there and uh, yeah basically when I got bored at that point of time then uh, well obviously the next path is either uh, test automation or more like a leadership position so decided to try out and uh, yeah got oh. got the opportunity there quite nice uh, at what type of projects uh, you have worked previously let's say yeah what type of project have you worked and what type of projects have you been a leader um so types of projects like i mentioned initially started with this kind of a communication uh dom domain uh communication telecommunications yeah. 
Uh, afterwards, I transferred more on fintechs and banking. Um, then again, a little bit communications. Uh, then from time to time, there was some switches like uh, hospitality apps, like, uh, for example, uh, different types of uh, hotel bookings and so on. And uh, currently, actually, I'm working with a very interesting domain, which is environment related. So quite quite a spectrum of projects. Okay, environment related towards which uh, side of, uh, let's say... Uh saving the world oh okay that's that's <laughs> really nice topic that's uh, really great that you are working on it uh how does your day as a test lead looks like um well currently usually it starts as that uh, in the mornings i'm checking the automation test results uh, seeing uh, whether something is failing or everything is green uh which of course is ideal case, but when, when the failures happens, then I start to investigate, like what's the failure, uh, whose test case is, is it from, from my team, and then based yeah, on, on this investigation plan, the tasks, like who has to work on, on the task uh, to fix it. Of course, um, when you go into like uh, leadership positions, management positions, there are a lot of meetings for you per day. Um, so there are daily stand-ups with your team, uh, with development team, um, obviously working in agile environment and all the agile ceremonies comes along. And then if there are any like issues happening during the day, uh, need to jump on those as well. One-on-one uh, -on -one meetings with team members to better understand uh, how they are feeling within the project, whether they need some help uh, and yeah. Also, from time to time, um, doing uh, some hands-on tasks as well myself. So, so you're going back to the field as well. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, nice. Because there's always something that you can learn. So, yeah. So you probably prefer the Agile methodology, right? Uh, yeah. It's, Have uh, you worked with easier. other ones as well? Yeah. Um, before, like it was two years ago when I was uh, working uh, with uh, one of the banks in uh, Baltics, uh, we actually had kind of a like a hybrid approach, let's put it. So basically it was like waterfall uh, because the domain was uh, very complex and you couldn't just provide the functionality like uh, let's say on two week basis. So it had to be provided at once. Uh, why I mentioned hybrid be, uh, was because we did the release uh, everything as once. However, the testing happened whenever there was something already uh, prepared. Uh, okay. So we didn't wait in tra like it is in traditional uh, waterfall. We didn't wait until development is completely finished so that we don't lose time. So whenever something came in for testing, then we started to test it. But yeah, have experience also with waterfall. Okay, so better stick to agile. <laughs> Depends, depends, yeah. Depends on the domain, I would say. So, okay. Uh, for what domain then would you suggest the Agile and for which um, the Waterfall, for example? Um, well, I think everybody is more or less trying to um, kind of navigate towards Agile because uh, it's uh, like faster. You can deliver um, um, things faster, features faster. Obviously, like the big corporate uh, clients, usually they tend to stick to waterfall because it's uh, easier from a uh, planning perspective, not only from like uh, tasks, but also a budgeting perspective and so on. However, they uh, are now being challenged by the startups, which are probably doing something similar, like, for example, Revolut. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they have provided a big challenge to all the traditional banks that we are having uh, here. Actually, so, that's true, yeah. Yeah, so so they are, like, launching their features very fast, and if traditional banks want to keep their clients, they have to adapt to, to the same pace. And traditional banks probably have a, a lot of hard time to adapt exactly. to a new system or even transition to a new system. Exactly, yeah. They, so, they have all the legacy systems running in the background who have been developed at, you know, 80s, 90s, yeah. so... Probably there are not a lot of people who can actually maintain that anymore. <laughs> so, so the ones who actually create new banks right now and with new systems, a great agile methodology, then they're succeeding very well. Exactly. Because yeah. they can implement things, as you said. Yep. That's nice. So what, how how you think, what does a good test lead? Uh, no. How do you think, what makes a good test lead? Um, what makes a good test lead? Um, first of all, like you have to understand the testing domain. 
so like uh, perfect if you have like uh, certification uh, like theoretical knowledge of course hands-on experience as well uh, communication is very crucial i think that's probably the most important thing like uh, how you can deliver information to stakeholders retrieve it from stakeholders then process it deliver it to the team in terms of tasks uh, of course like uh, empathy as well uh, towards your team members uh, to for example if there are some kind of uh, problems within the team that uh, uh, somebody gives you negative feedback about somebody then you try to investigate what actually happened uh, before jumping to conclusions you have to be objective as well uh, when evaluating different types of information that you are receiving um, and of course you have to be motivated that's really nice. Uh, <laughs> that's really nice uh, explanation about that one. Uh, how and um, how does, for example, one person can transition to a test lead role? When do you know that? Hey, I'm a test lead, or is it just like I don't know? A boss comes in and says, "Hey, you're gonna be a test lead right now." <laughs> how it works? <laughs> um, I think there are like two ways how to do it. One is like you mentioned that uh, boss comes in and says that, okay, you're, you're doing good job. You are test lead now. But uh, usually it's, it's more like a natural thing. I would say, at least from my personal experience, I can tell that uh, at certain point uh, when you have done manual testing for a while and maybe like automation is not kind of a, your cup of tea, um, you kind of start to feel bored. Um, uh, with, with the tasks that you are having and well obviously we all have this kind of a, a drive to improve to grow and obviously then the next step is to, to try out uh, leading more people like um, training them um, uh, sharing your knowledge that you have gained so far and uh, I think this is the preconditions for for you to become a, a test lead okay uh, as we know there's a lot of um, people maybe uh, how to say, um, don't understand the test lead and test architect or test manager is. So can you explain the difference and uh, yeah, say what is the difference between a test manager, test architect or the test lead? All right, I'll try. I'll do my best here. <laughs> um, I'll start with test architect probably. Um, well, from personal experience, to be honest, like I haven't uh, in any of the projects I have worked with, I haven't... Uh, uh, seen such role as a test architect uh, so far but I mean uh, that's that's just my experience uh, but from theoretical part like test architect is a role uh, which basically helps the test team um, to implement different types of uh, types of technical solutions so for example if a team uh, is working on something very specific uh, testing something very specific where there is nothing in market available uh, for them to to to, uh, to do the testing uh, then test architect uh, is the right person or, or the right role um, to kind of uh, investigate how uh, how to technically help the team, like prepare the tool uh, or, or scripts maybe. Um, if there is like huge uh, data, for example, needed uh, specific uh, kind of data, then test architect uh, would uh, prepare scripts to generate this kind of data. So he's working more on the technical uh, aspects of, of the testing. Um, <clears throat> uh, test manager, uh, test manager is uh, like, um, let's say in a hierarchy a bit higher than test lead uh, test manager is usually leading a team of uh, test leads so he's responsible for uh, multiple uh, test teams uh, uh, test manager as a role uh, so far I have seen uh, exist uh, mostly in like corporate uh, environments uh, where there are like multiple projects uh, happening and then there is like yeah uh, this uh, test manager who is kind of uh, taking care uh, of uh, all the testing He's activities. basically overseeing everyone, exactly. uh, every team on exactly. several projects. Exactly. Okay. And uh, additionally, like uh, compared to test lead, uh, uh, other tasks that test manager has is like planning the budgets and things like that. So, so more like on, on really manager side of things. And uh, test lead is usually focusing on a single team or there might be exceptions and uh, he might be leading multiple teams 
uh, but he's more into day-to-day -day action uh, with with the team like resolving uh, a team's problems uh, sharing uh, like the information to test manager so that uh, he can then uh, provide the information further to stakeholders and yeah and so let's say that test leads are more technical than test managers right um not necessarily okay. i mean uh, from my perspective like test managers still they usually start also from test leading uh, from position aspect, right? exactly and then they grow into this role so again like it's a natural involvement of uh, of the career uh of course it's not always the case as well um there might be also test leads who are not uh, like uh, focusing on automation so they have like uh, these technical test analysts or or technical staff who is actually uh, doing uh, all the automation and just providing metrics uh, to test lead so in that case uh, yeah this uh, statement comes valid but um, i would say that uh, yeah uh, usually test managers yeah, also have the ability background. to understand exactly. technical things. exactly yeah so how do you think what are the responsibilities of the test lead and uh, yeah what are the main responsibilities um first of all like leading the test team is the is the main responsibility yeah. um uh, identify and align testing with organization needs um scope defining scope understanding the scope defining the scope to the team estimating probably no yes estimating of course uh, preparing like uh, documentation um, test plans uh, allocating those test plans uh, to team members gathering metrics uh, doing analysis of the metrics so that they can provide information to the um, i don't know wh whoever needs it project managers test managers um, selecting tools, uh, finding ways how you can improve uh, current uh, testing processes, uh, how you can grow uh, your team's ability to do more. Uh, and of course, like uh, also hiring uh, additional team members. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you think, what are the common challenges that test leads face and how can these be overcome? Or maybe you can uh, show some uh, previous past experience that you have for challenges. Um, yeah, so a couple of challenges, at least from, from my side that I have been, um, uh, uh, struggling with, let's say, first of all, it's like, uh, <clears throat> building the test team itself. Um, to be honest, like, I'm not sure even, uh, which, uh, which is, uh, more, um, kind of, a. A harder case uh, whether you have to build the team from zero or you have to start with the already existing testing team and then just i think uh, it would be easier to do with existing uh, teams maybe if you can take a couple out of from each team yeah if you like know everybody then it's easier but if you need to completely do it from zero then it it's going to be problematic probably yeah and uh, i mean i i agree and uh, of course it also depends on the domain if the domain is complex and the team is yeah. already there they already know something about the main so you don't have to do the training or sp search for somebody really specific so yeah uh, building test team is uh, probably one of the biggest uh, challenges um how to avoid it well to be honest i'm not sure <laughs> No possibility. There's no possibility to avoid that, so this challenge will always remain. Um, selecting tools uh, for the for the testing. Um, so, for example, test management tool. Like there are tons of test management tools available in the market. Sure. So, how to choose the right one um, depends. Sometimes it can be pain in the ass. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, of course, estimations, because these these uh, these are being asked from us a lot. So, how to properly estimate uh, how much time yeah. the task could take for you, especially if the requirement is very ambiguous, and if you're talking about agile, this this usually is the case. And if uh, something probably changes, then you need to communicate to stakeholders why date or dates change as well. Exactly, and exactly. It's probably the next uh, issue or the harder part, challenge yeah. to communicate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because it's, uh, uh, w once you communicate these kind of things, like you, you will get the challenge coming from the uh, yeah. from the uh, your managers, and uh, of course, like. Uh, but wherever the people are involved, there will be conflicts arising from time to time. So this is also something that you as a lead have to take into consideration uh, that you will have to resolve it. At some point, you will have to deal with these kind of Those things Those are as well. the challenges that you're like, ah, oh, no, I don't want that. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> harder part to solve. It's like you need to understand all the perspectives from each side, yep. and then somehow think who lies, who not, or what was the thing? Why did they? Ah, that's that's quite hard. Yeah. Um. So and you have to yeah come up with solution where probably everybody's yeah. more or less happy about it. True. So that's 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 the, that's the art of being test lead and, and and the most uh important thing is to not hurt feelings yeah exactly <laughs> that's the most so yeah what have been your biggest challenge being as a team lead from your past um as i'm quite introverted uh so communication part has been quite uh quite a uh, challenge for me um Obviously, I have worked with myself on this topic. I hope I have grown uh, into it a bit, uh, like um, um, learned how to do it better. So communication can be improved. So yeah. if you are really, really introvert and you don't want to speak, yeah. and if you have... So what would you suggest to improve the communication? Challenge yourself. I mean, I'm here. <laughs> so so this is yeah definitely one of the kind of... a improvement steps that i'm taking uh to 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 be here to talk with you Af afterwards like probably it's also good to take a step further uh doing some conferences so just to kind of uh, get uh, the anxiety out of your way of uh, speaking publicly um uh, and just yeah keep in mind that everybody who is listening uh, even in the meetings with uh, with your team uh Everybody's human. Everybody can ma make mistakes. Yeah, that's uh, true. The, the main point is just if you have something unclear, make sure that you ask questions. Even the stupid ones. Yeah, exactly. Like like there's this saying, like, uh, there are no stupid questions. There are only stupid answers. So <laughs> so don't blame yourself for true. having questions. So, uh, Have you read any communication books? Um, yeah, I have, but I don't remember the names. So <laughs> I can I can try to no. to send it over afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, they were pretty good. They helped me, but I don't remember the names. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, uh, what has been your biggest failure or biggest success? Um, let's start with the failure then. Okay. Um, From the negative side. Yeah, go. exactly. I'm as I'm a tester. We are always very pessimistic, and as a Latvian, we are extremely pessimistic. So that. <laughs> That creates especially even it, it worse. <laughs> especially in winter. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so my biggest failure, actually, to be honest, like as we are on this topic about test leading, my biggest failure was the first time I actually was uh, leading a team. Um, so yeah, uh, before before that project, I was kind of uh, leading myself. So I was a uh, one QA team. Uh, Test lead, uh, tester. So everything was done by yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Oh. And so have you, have all you all the conflicts that I had, you, I had with myself. <laughs> you probably had a really good mentor before that to do uh, that. Yeah. Because not honest. a lot of people actually can do all the things. Yeah. Uh, some people spe specifically can work only in one uh, exact field. Well, not like several ones. So yeah, probably a really good mentor. Yeah. Uh, Actually, on the first project when I joined, I think, well, Dennis was one of uh, of of the leads in the team, and Andres. Oh, so so Big I think guys. <laughs> yeah, so I think yeah, mentorship was was very good, and uh, yeah, learned a, learned a lot there. Uh, but returning to the challenge, uh, so yeah, uh, after this first project, I was offered to. Uh, take a role as a test lead uh, in fintech company um, in a fintech project not company in a fintech okay. uh, project I think at that point of time we had like uh, five or six team members uh, spread across like there was iOS team Android team web team um, and like obviously like I had the theoretical knowledge of uh, how, how these things should happen but uh, the practical knowledge uh, well it it was very different to what I was doing at that point of time. And uh, yeah, like I mentioned before, the communication was probably the biggest issue at that point of time. Um, so yeah, to communicate the issues that I was experiencing, uh, like uh, I didn't want to show myself from like a bad light that I don't know how to do uh, something that I supposed to do. 
um and uh, obviously like yeah it, it built up built up and then eventually i think after nine months i got replaced wow. but uh nonetheless like even though the experience um ended as it ended but uh, i i see it as a very uh, positive thing that happened in my life and uh, even like um uh, even if you like uh fail at something the the most important part is uh that you you, you get a you, you do a ret- yeah exactly you do a retrospective of yourself like what what went wrong like what what did what could you have done better make a list uh where you can improve yourself and then work on that list so obviously like uh, as i was quite new to the test leading uh, area um the first thing I do was I set myself a goal that, uh, hey, I'm going to read through the Test Manager ISTQB book to learn more from the theoretical part of it, uh, get the certification uh, for myself. And did it help? It helped, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, and since, since that day, I also, um, I think I never ever said no to any project that was offered to me uh, to, to lead, so... So yeah. So the ISTQB gave you a confidence boost. ISTQB gave me like theoretical part of it, and uh, the confidence came with uh, practical aspects. With practical aspects, yeah. Nice. So you try to improve yourself uh, in each project, uh, show you from your best uh, possible light. Don't be shy asking questions, like I mentioned before, and uh, yeah. And after that, probably came the biggest success as well. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah, to that's that. right. Um, so yeah, and uh, and uh, then uh, also at the beginning, I mentioned this banking project that I was working on. Initially, I started as um, I was helping uh, uh, test lead uh, in the bank uh, to implement uh, agile testing. Uh, uh, principles. So they were planning to transfer from waterfall to agile. So I was helping to introduce that, um, uh, describing processes, uh, working in Jira, setting up Jira, um, like doing trainings uh, for for the QA team and so. And uh, then one day, um, like there there was this initiative uh, with uh, within the bank uh, that uh, they basically. Uh, plan to implement new payments uh, system and uh, considering that the domain was very complex the timelines were very short um, they they had trouble with uh, finding a test manager who would be able to to take over to actually do the job exactly so I got offered the chance I, I knew it won't be easy but I took it anyways and uh, yeah so after a lot of struggles, after a lot of uh, questioning myself, why I'm doing this to myself, <laughs> why it's actually needed, I uh, got, got over myself and uh, yeah, uh, managed to deliver those projects on time uh, with uh, very good quality. And uh, but I mean, it was not only my efforts; it was like whole team, like leadership team, was uh, exceptional. Uh, uh, all the testing team was was great, um, so a lot of aspects fall together. And actually, this was the biggest confidence boost that I had. Uh, that well, I'm I'm capable to do something like that. Then, since since uh, since that project, I don't think that there has been anything that uh, that has surprised me. So I think, I think <laughs> the main thing to do a task properly is that you need a really good team. Yeah, like a really good team. Exactly. If exactly. you if you don't have a team, then that's sad. Exactly. That's quite yeah. bad. So yeah. So uh, how how long period was between the success and failure? In the time wise. Um, I think it was like two years. Two years. Two, two three years. So it took wow. a while it to took, sink it in. It took really a while. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when did you finish the ISTQB? Um. I think actually I finished the STQB one, one and a half year after the failure. And was it hard at that time? Um, 
I mean, reading theory books, it's 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 not easy. It's like, always uh, not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You, you can compare it to a sleeping pill. So you you are reading five pages and then then you're out. <laughs> uh but but yeah uh it it wasn't easy but but the exam also wasn't that that hard i, I mean I, I guess as i read the whole book uh, it it was a bit a bit easier for me to uh to to go through the um exam well at least it helped at least it helped yep and a check mark in my uh to do list <laughs> So That's small dopamine the, uh, dose for have for you uh, how long list do you have? Oh uh, well, it's it's it's, quite it's, long. it's growing. <laughs> 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 there are always like new things to to learn, like okay. like the 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 thing that you son- sent me in the chat the, today. So yeah, something to have a look That's true. That's true. How can a test leader effectively plan and execute a testing strategy for a project or a product? How do you think? Um, well, first of all, you have to understand the organization needs, the project needs. Um, so, and based on that, you need to define the strategy and uh, approach how you would be testing. Uh, obviously, it's like back and forth also between you uh, as a test team representative, stakeholders, um, like selling them idea how you would be doing the testing. There would be coming feedback, like maybe. Um, suggestions what you might be doing something uh, differently and also probably understanding team's capacity as well exactly yeah and uh, obviously like once the approach is ready to to implement that in the right way uh, so have a session with your team explaining why you are doing uh, things that you have defined in that way um, and uh, yeah basically working on uh, on on that so that everybody in the team also understands uh, how how the processes will be further on okay you said that communication is one of the key aspects uh how can test lead uh effectively communicate with the team members that you have and also the stakeholders uh to ensure that the testing goals are aligned and understood from both sides yeah um so First of all, like having these, um, I think like daily standups is a great opportunity to, to, to discuss, like if there's something unclear. Um, if it's not daily standups, then either one-on-one meetings with the team members as well, like especially after you have uh, worked on uh, like explaining the strategies or maybe uh, you might have team members who are also a bit shy to express their opinion when others are listening, but maybe on one-on-one they open up and like explain really good points that you can use. In terms of stakeholders, probably, again, it's first of all, like written communication would be uh, advisable because uh, cause, like information, if spoken uh, in the meetings, they tend to fall between the chairs. They need, so, to, they need to note down things during the meeting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, if you have it written down and if it's approved, then, then it's okay. Um, otherwise, like if there is still some communication needed, some ad- adjustments needed, then, well, you adjust and again either have a meeting and afterwards an email out with what you have agreed upon so yeah i think that's at least that's how i would do it <laughs> nice uh, how can a test lead foster a culture of continuous improvement within the team and encourage collaboration and innovation um collaboration i can start with that probably so um I think like um, as as there is a concept like pair programming, I think uh, also a good approach is like pair testing. What sure, I have noticed, okay. noticed, yeah, basically when you have two or more team members uh, working on the same task. Well, there's uh, also extreme programming as well. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about extreme, <laughs> extreme testing. How testing. how does look? <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite interesting. <laughs> but yeah, so that that's that's a good point to to think about. Uh, but yeah, so so these kind of tasks where you are uh, working uh, multiple team members on, on the same thing, like obviously as they are facing the same task, uh, same challenges, they are kind of uh, getting know uh, each other also uh, much better when, when they are working on the same challenges, team building activities, uh, so that again, everybody knows everybody within the team. Um, continuous improvement, uh, well... I think as for example development teams they are having hackathons uh, yeah, something true. similar might have might be done also for the testing let's call them testathons test, test, <laughs> test marathon exactly uh, where where the team uh, 
would uh, would work on like uh, checking out different types of tools maybe what what can be brought in into their daily work uh, uh, like hot topic ai like maybe how you can implement ai features in in so your daily discuss some new things yeah. that uh, world has shown to us and just try to implement yeah, it in the exactly. existing exactly strategy. and uh, i think interesting part also is like if you give uh, I don't know, like once once per month or something, if you have your team members like uh, read some interesting art- articles and then kind of uh, um, ask them if they can share the information they have gotten from from uh, from this art- article and share it with the team, like to raise discussions. And uh, so I think that's that's also uh, a, a nice thing for, for like uh, innovation and uh, growth within the team. Um, how how do you think if uh, if you have a team and there's no new team leads from your team does that mean that you as a team lead failed to like uh, improve your team or how does it work how do you think oh sorry can you repeat so let's say that you have you have a team of great uh, great uh, workers right mm-hmm. and uh, as we know as you said earlier uh, as you said earlier, um, team leads come out in a nature way, right? So if from your team, no new team leads appear, does that mean that you were a bad team lead? No, not, not necessarily. I think like uh, there are different types of per- people. Uh, like personally, I know a couple of, uh, for example, developers who are really not willing to move into manager position because like they like they to write code. Yeah. They don't want to talk. Exactly. They don't want to spend their time in meetings. They want yeah. to write code. They want to create something, right? Uh, similar thing is uh, for for. Uh, quality engineers also like there are people who are happy with uh, when they are given a task they they can just test break the application uh, find new ways how to how to break it so it's also a very creative process um, but uh, yeah I don't think that uh, if, if you can't point anybody from the team to be a test lead that does that it does make you a bad uh, test lead it's more like uh, also like your team members if they are willing to move into this position they probably should kind of uh, yeah, drive need, into the discussion with you yeah they need to show willingness and motivation exactly yeah, exactly makes sense uh, what kind of help do you normally provide to the test team um Usually it's uh, like, for example, if there are any questions like how to do uh, something better in terms of testing. So based on my experience, then I kind of uh, help to decide in which way we should go. For example, uh, let's let's pick uh, automation. So okay. um, so if, if there's a question like uh, what with what we should start automation uh, are, are we like going into depth with like negative scenarios as well and so on uh, then then probably I would like recommend uh, in, in in which direction uh, we should go uh, de- like define uh, how how we would be doing that um, otherwise um, basically anything if they have any blockers like if they can't uh, fulfill their task uh, due to I don't know somebody not answering so I'll jump in and ask uh, like the person who to whom uh, the question was addressed who is not replying uh, but uh, yeah um, uh, ask personally to to, to help uh, I don't know any technical difficulties like for example like uh, the laptop is slow obviously like uh, would would request for a new the, laptop the or classic something. question well just make a request to IT. <laughs> yeah true those are the funny ones uh how do you ensure that the team is adequately testing the product and identifying potential issues or bugs um i mean first of all if uh, there are no bug slippages in production then well you can evaluate that the work has been done great um that uh, most of the defects have been caught in the testing phase. Um, 
I, I wanted to say like uh, to, to check like the amount of test cases that uh, they are doing per story, for example, but probably yeah, this is not very that's, good metric uh, to do. That's to, not to... really good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ha have you, you had this? Okay, let's switch. Have you had a slippage in production? Uh, yeah, from time to time it happens. Luckily, no critical or blo blocker issues, but well, some some something tend to slip by. But obviously, even if if uh, like critical and blocker issues slip by, then like what can you do is to make analysis what went wrong, uh, what happened, why you missed it in the, for example, requirements phase, why you missed it in testing phase, uh, where the information was lacking, um, and make corrective actions in the future. Do you investigate or check analytics to improve test setups or testing itself? Yeah, of course. So, uh, like I mentioned, uh, as uh, one of my daily tasks is uh, in the morning check uh, the automation results, um, seeing first of all yeah and pass fail uh, ratios, also checking the execution time. Um, additionally, in the past uh, we had projects also where we were kind of a tracking how much time um, a task was was taking, uh, just to understand like. Is there a way where we can improve uh, on uh, maybe not on execution speed, but maybe if uh, if a task uh, takes longer to be executed because like there is a lack of information, so we have to wait until somebody replies and explain us this. Um, so so yeah, I, I think this is uh, one of the also main uh, tasks for test leads to to follow up. Is it hard to communicate with developers as well? Do you communicate on a daily basis? Oh, yeah, of course. Or if you find a lot of critical issues, you just go straight to developers? Um, yeah, yeah. Of course, like um, being a QA is not an easy position because you you are always considered to bring bad news, right? Yeah, <laughs> more than <true>. good. <laughs> you never like I had the situation yesterday when I was just uh, cheering up for the team for a good job and they were asking like... Uh, what do you want from us? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you it is a joke, news, but, yeah. <laughs> but still. <laughs> if you bring good news, then what do you want from us? <laughs> exactly, yeah. But, uh, but no, no. Um, yeah, I, I think like uh, communication with developers is extremely important uh, because like, uh, well, eventually you have to have information from them, right? Uh, you need to provide information to them um, and uh, they can give insights that probably you won't be able to get yourself so they know what code they have written they know where might be the like most vulnerable uh, places what you have to check so they can a little bit guide you in the way how you can check the edge cases right so this kind of communication is uh, very necessary yeah, yeah exactly and uh, one thing as a test lead that you have to take into consideration, uh, considering that usually you are bringing mostly bad news, <laughs> is how to like present the message that you are presenting so that it's not uh, pointed to like a direct directly to a person or or being offensive. Well, well or sometimes something. you know a person well, then you can hey, you made really <laughs> bad code. So you can sometimes do that, but if yeah, you don't know yeah. the other side, then yeah, you need to be quite. Uh, snaky yeah say like that. exactly well also if you want to as as a joke just point to somebody well you, you have to know the person really well <laughs> otherwise yeah it can turn out not so nice yeah, it can turn out that you need to go to hr <laughs> speak about <laughs> things how, how you're treating your team exactly and and learn communication yeah to read books it's that i don't know straight to names communication. Of. <laughs> how you how do you prioritize between tests um well, usually, uh, if you're speaking like from agile perspective, usually yeah. the user stories, uh, well, the sprint it hel itself has already like a sprint goal. So you already know like which tasks are the most important ones for you. Uh, obviously, the test cases reflected to those stories also have higher priority than others. Um, so based, based on that, you can prioritize... Uh, Secondly, for example, if, if there are not so clear priorities from, from the manager side coming, then obviously all the test cases that uh, have the most impact on the end user are, are the most critical ones that you have to check. All the happy path scenarios have to be checked. And only then we go into depth, like checking negative scenarios and so on. If you compare yourself now, how you prioritize the, between the tests and how did you in the past? It has improved a lot? Um, the principles more or less are, are very similar, uh, but um, obviously I can't say that I haven't improved. <laughs> of course. 
<laughs> I have improved a lot. <laughs> Especially in communication. Exactly. You are here, so that's that's nice. Uh, well, and uh, how do you address the human resource splitting between the desks? Um, yeah, so probably in each team uh, there are uh, quality engineers who are more specialized on some particular area topics. of the applica application. Yeah, topics. Um, well, my personal approach is that probably it shouldn't be the case that you only assign these kind of tasks only to this person um, for for very one very good reason. Um, so you you need to have the knowledge split across the tr uh, a team. Um, like for example, the person who who is an expert in that particular topic, like he might have vacation, um, sick leave. Um, I don't know, decide to leave leave the jobs so and, and then basically you will be left without anything. So, <clears throat> uh, of course, the, the focus will be on this person who knows the topic, but additionally, uh, it's uh, I think it's a good approach also to allocate somebody who might be uh, supporting him, uh, who might be working together with him, like doing this kind of a pair testing thing uh, and basically learning the topic as well. And uh, basically, that this knowledge is split across your uh, test team, and it it covers like every um, um, domain, every like aspect of of the project that you are having. So so that your team is let's say cross functional in a way that they can test everything. Uh, how do you use test estimation, and how do you ensure quality estimations of the tests? Um, so how do we use test estimation? Um, well, in the current project, uh, to be frank, we are not uh, estimating that lot from, from quality uh, assurance perspective, but uh, like in the past, uh, obviously, where we were giving uh, the estimations, like in the past projects, we were giving the estimations how much effort it might take from the test team to deliver a particular uh, feature. Um, how we do the estimations, um, it also really depends on how detailed is the requirement, um, how complex is the domain. Um, obviously, like a rule of thumb is probably to add like 10-20% buffer, because like uh, things probably will go wrong. Like I haven't ever experienced a project where everything runs just smoothly and perfectly. So, so I yeah. actually have. Really? Yeah. And in the end, everything went, <laughs> went <laughs> south. <laughs> but it, it went good for a start. <laughs> so yeah, actually, it, it never I never experienced as well. Exactly. So so the buffer is very important when you are doing estimations. Um, uh, I know that uh, in um, well, not I know, but uh, in the past uh, we also did uh, like. Uh, we had agreement also with a client that we had like X amount of test cases per day expected from a, a quality engineer. And what happened if you didn't do the X amount? Uh, then then we probably like investigated what went wrong, whether the task was too complex, uh, whether there were some blockers along the way. Uh, Hopefully the client wasn't dissatisfied. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Like uh, usually like uh, we were way above the uh, expectation. So... So yeah. What are some key metrics that test leads should track to evaluate the success of the testing efforts and how can they be used to later just drive the improvements? Yeah, um, so I think from also from stakeholder perspective, one of the most important metrics that test lead must track is the progress of testing. Okay. Uh, like obviously you will have a plan ready that uh, like feature X uh, takes time from, I don't know, Monday till Thursday, uh, and on Friday, well, it's usually not a good uh, practice to deploy on Fridays, but well, <laughs> let's, let's make an exception. So on Friday, the feature must go out, uh, and uh, it's it's a very important feature. So obviously, like uh, test, uh, like stakeholders will be very interested, like where we are with uh, with the feature, and uh, well, yeah, this is the information that you have to track, like. Um, <clears throat> 
how far are we with uh, with the feature so let's say there are 100 test cases so the expectation is like we got to do at least 25 per day and then at the end of the day you can either send it out as a report or uh, have a call with the stakeholders explaining that okay that today we did like 50 test cases so we are uh, more than on track let's say we will be able probably to provide uh, uh, the results faster uh, so yeah testing progress uh, obviously like defects and the amount of defects criticality of those defects so that uh, um, the managers can take a uh, decision whether or whether to release is, is or it better not. to find one uh, critical defect than for example 40 minor defects let's say it like that how do you think to to find yeah. uh, I, I would say definitely yes because like i mean <laughs> critical, critical like those critical. those low ones maybe like uh, i don't know low like impact. the yeah 10 percent maybe will be spotted by the customer but the critical one i mean yeah. everybody will start to send you like angry emails <laughs> that something is not working <laughs> as we know uh, a lot of people are working they a lot right and they don't have work and life balance uh, how would you say is the best approach to handle it the work and life balance uh, as a test lead um, so yeah and is it stressful to manage both sides um yeah i think it is stressful <laughs> because like when when you reach the kind of a manager leadership position yeah then uh, obviously it's uh, much harder to kind of have the balance between work and uh, personal life um, because the line just vanishes right yeah exactly so as a test lead you like like in my case i i to be honest like rarely do normal hours um so so it takes a bit more uh from from me uh which which is okay uh i have used to it so so it's okay for me uh, yeah but i mean uh, even if you don't do like uh normal uh let's say normal working hours then um uh, obviously like uh, there's still possibility to kind of uh, uh have uh, like extra time off when, whenever you are needed yep. Uh, to do some personal stuff during the day um for example yeah um but of course like keeping the balance uh is is the perfect uh, situation and i think everybody should uh, thrive to do that but uh, of course there comes pre periods when when there is a like you need to stretch a lot like if there's deadlines coming obviously it, yeah. it will take more from you um so so then you have to sacrifice a bit more than than you want to um but uh, again afterwards like there probably comes like more calmer uh periods so as long as you kind of take a rest in those yep. periods until the next stretch then then i think uh, that's that's fine also okay. depends on your family status whether you're <laughs> single uh, or non-single significant yeah. others Unmarried. support this yeah uh, if we're talking about a balance, how can a test lead uh, balance the time and resources to ensure the testing is thorough and efficient without sacrificing the quality? Um, so obviously there will be meetings during the day with the uh, stakeholders, I would say, but you also have to find time to have uh, the meetings with your team to listen what what they have to say, what what they have, uh, what kind of issues they are having uh, during the day. Um, so. In that sense, if if you hear uh, like uh, also your team struggles, then uh, then you can help. And obviously, as you have the voice also uh, to to stakeholders, you can raise these concerns to ask for their help. So that's that's uh, that's that's how you can uh, like keep the quality up to at least current um, uh, position. What are some key trends and developments in the testing field and how can test leads stay ahead of the curve and adapt to these changes? Um, obviously, like uh, the new technologies that, that are coming in, uh, blockchains, AI, everything. So uh, th these are kind of a very trendy things. Probably uh, AI is the most uh, yeah. needed one. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this is something that also test leads in order uh, for, for uh, yeah, to adapt uh, kind of a, at least the ideas what they can introduce uh, from it in their daily work like they need to investigate like uh, what is happening what is uh, trendy um, learn a bit it uh, about it in more depth uh, understand uh, 
you know, how 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 it might help uh, in in their daily uh, life. Um, I think it was quite nice discussion. We could actually wrap it up, right? Yeah. But before we wrap it up, I have still one question. Uh, sure. What is your go-to quote in life? Go-to quote in life. If you have one, that comes mm. first to your mind. I had one, but I don't remember. Or, or maybe not quote, maybe suggestion, suggestion to our our viewers, or listeners. Well, I think like something that I mentioned uh, before. Um, so, don't don't say no to opportunities, even if it seems hard uh, or like something that you don't know. Uh, eventually, you will learn, and as harder the challenge is the more rewarding it is the more faster you will have to learn it um and well the the more like valuable it will be for you afterwards and you know, gain your confidence uh better understand the subject so so don't don't say no to opportunities if you take a lot of opportunities you can advance your skills and knowledge then that's true yep so yeah thank you that you joined us today and thanks, thanks for everyone me. who tuned in and listened to this discussion with Chris Tips, where we talked about test leading, uh, what it is, how, what goes into it, and how to plan, implement, and do things and stuff. <laughs> Just feel free to reach out to us on Instagram profile, Facebook, or LinkedIn page. And you can find us by name, Tesdo Lab. And let's keep advancing your skills and knowledge set and see you with the next one.